Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm 26-ish hours into a 48-hour island and I still have so much to do. The goal for today is to get all of the top tiers of the island completed. The first area I'm working on is the third tier. Along the left I'm going to build an inaccessible forest all the way along to the right. Then I'm going to put the campsite at the front of the cliff. But before I get into decorating, I had to run around and do a few dailies and because red was on my island, I went back and forth a couple of times to try and get some more items. But the first thing I needed to do was clear the area because I decided to use all white flowers on the island. I did have a lot of red and yellow ones that I had planted at the start of the challenge. So I decided to use them on the third tier cliff. I have to dig them all up anyway so I might as well use them. So as you can see I'm just planting a mix of cedar and hardwood trees. It would have been a lot better if I had some stunted trees to use up along the top as well because it would have made it look a lot more natural. But I didn't have any left and I didn't want to waste any more time to go time travelling. I place some fencing along the front and plant a ton of flowers and shrubs and of course a heap of weeds. You can never have too many weeds when it comes to island decorating. And even though you probably can't see them, I also put down some custom codes. I feel like this area took me forever. I ended up having to go time traveling anyway because even though I had specifically planted a heap of trees just for this build, I ended up running out of them so I had to plant some more and time travel ahead so that they would grow. I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. I'm glad that I decided to use the red and yellow flowers up here. I think with it being fenced off and not being able to get up here, it kind of gives it like a national park protected area type feeling because the flowers that are up here are not anywhere else on the island. So as you can see, I found the hair with the big bow and yes, I did buy it in nearly every color. Anyway, I had a campsite villager and it was Vivian. I decided to buy a plot and invite her to live on the island. But for the life of me, I could not get her to move in. She just, she wouldn't do it. She said, I'm not interested. You suck. That's the feeling that I got. It was kind of rude, honestly. I ended up getting a Nook Mall ticket and going to a mystery island. I found Azalea and really considered inviting her to move to the island. But I didn't and I don't know why. So I grabbed two more tickets, I found Hans and then I found Anka. I absolutely love her but she does not fit in with the theme of this island so I unfortunately had to leave her behind. So I decided to time travel and see who I would get. Turned out to be more of a pain than I thought it would be. I initially skipped one day, no autofill. Another day, no autofill. Skipped three days. Still no autofill. So then I skipped four more days and my plot still hadn't filled with anybody. Sidebar, I got lucky with this money tree because I accidentally planted all of my bells and I was almost completely broke. I ended up going backwards nearly three weeks and it still didn't autofill. I was ready to tear my hair out by this point. And then finally, next in-game day, it said sold. Anyway, so along here, I'm going to extend the forest along the top and place the campsite. I didn't really get any before shots, but this is what it looked like then. And this is what it looks like now. I'm working on the second tier now and the first area I'm going to do is Annalise's yard. It turns out Annalise is a horse. Is her name Annalisa or Annalise? I, I don't know. Anyway, 
I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with this area so I decided to just wing it and figure something out. All I knew at this point was I wanted to make a diagonal garden on the left. Behind her house I made a small sitting area and then I just started decorating randomly and didn't really know where I was going with this. I ended up having to do a bit of time travelling to find some bushes that I needed. I knew I wanted to use them in the diagonal garden somehow. So I planted some bushes and then I had to time travel again. There was so much time travelling for this island. So much. Then I went back and did a little bit more decorating and then I time travelled again. For some reason, I do not know. I really struggled with this area. I don't know why, but I eventually got into it and got the build done. I love these gardens. They are so cute and they are really simple to do. If you're thinking about doing a diagonal garden on your island, it is best to use the light dirt instead of the dark dirt. If you use the dark dirt, it does change the tone of the custom codes that you need to use for the corners and then they don't blend in as well. I will leave the code for the grass corners in the description below. The creator does have all of the different colors that you need throughout the year. They don't blend in completely, but it does do a pretty good job. And then once you add in like fences and plants and decoration, you don't really notice it anyway. I was initially going to put the hyacinths with some sugarcane, but I didn't really look full enough, so I ended up swapping out the sugarcane for some bushes. Now, you didn't see it here, but I did time travel again, like four times. Once again, I'm not really sure why I was doing it. I did film this like two weeks ago, so I'm pretty sure I was just trying to get some more items and DIYs. But while I was doing that, I came across Red, so I did go back and forth a couple of times to see him. And I found the wheat field. I was so excited. I love the wheat. Who doesn't love the wheat field? It was struggle street at the start, but I did finally manage to get this build done in the end. The next area we're going to be working on is for Sydney and Cookie and also this back area here near the campsite. The first thing I did was I went and moved their houses and then for some reason for this area, I built it all backwards. Normally I would have started at Sydney's house, then done Cookie's yard and then the area at the back, uh, but I started at the back. I don't know why. Anyway, at the back here I'm building a little market for Cookie to run. She's got all sorts of things here. She's got packaged food and she's got fresh food that she's made herself. I would have really loved to have added in some jam jars because they're really cute, but unfortunately I never did come across the DIY for any of those items. There is even a little vegetable patch at the back where Cookie grows all of her ingredients. I really love how this build turned out. I think it might be one of my favourites on the island. The next build is for Cookie's yard. Before I get started, I need to go and take her some medicine. I know she's not real, but I felt bad. <laughs> so for Cookie's yard, I wanted to keep it simple, but still have those cozy and welcoming vibes. I didn't really use that many items for this build, but there is a sitting area and a little spot for Cookie to go and do some painting. And of course, a clothesline. Such a good item. Now 
I just used a lot of custom codes and flowers and weeds to fill the area up but still have it easy to navigate. I really love the way that it looks and with Cookies Market at the back I think the whole area just looks so cute. The last area I'm going to show you for today's video is Sydney's Yard. It wasn't really much space to work with here so I ended up just building her a little flower garden and then filling in the surrounding areas. So that is all for today. Spoiler alert, I have finished my 48 hours. The question is though, did I finish the island? I guess you'll just have to subscribe to find out. Thank you for watching, hit the like button, all that stuff, and I will see you next time. Bye!